he doing at home? No pet. Oh. He's an emotional support dog. He can feel when I get anxious. <laughs> Take a deep breath. How did you do this? You're only 10 pounds. <laughs> Start the show. I have something to report. <laughs> because... In the script, it says wolf. I didn't realize it was an actual dog woofing. <laughs> Bryce, you have Welcome so much to the to explain. Killers, the show about watching the stuff you love, when you want, where you want, however you want, wolf. <laughs> I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood. <laughs> explain to me what's up with this dog. So this is the trailer for Hulu's Into the Dark Good Boy. This is the latest in the Hulu meets Blumhouse production monthly horror film series that comes to Hulu exclusively on June 12th. Uh, right on. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what makes me say wolf is our good friend, Justin Robert Young, joining us for this episode. That's right. Some of us can do segues. That's right. Yeah. Who let the dogs out? Hulu and Blumhouse exclusively. In the dark. Good boy. In the dark. Oh. Yeah. Hey, boys, it's good to be with you. It's so rare that I get to speak to you, too, that I'm just glad to do it. Uh, uh, I just yeah, love to keep yeah, our, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll keep, tell you keep, the, keep the pilot light burning or the pilot X light. <laughs> so, so, somebody asked me today, name one time three times today that you've done a show with Justin Robert Young. <laughs> and I almost had, couldn't have an answer, but luckily here you are. I know, I know. Uh, I, I just want to let everybody know also just my commitment to live streaming and podcasting for all of you. Uh, my butt sweat ate into the leather of this chair and I had to get leather tape. Uh, that <laughs> is, that's the level for which I care about you, the podcast listener. Also, uh, not, rare not fact. A uh, Justin's a xenomorph, is, so it's acidic butt sweat. That's that's how that works. Tell you what, when you're working with a donk like this, bro. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> can we, can, can we do the show? show? What are you going to do with all that junk? You're going to start the primary target. <laughs> God. We're killing it. Should we restart? We're killing it. No, <laughs> this is great. Everything's great. <laughs> Hey, folks, uh, Hulu and Plex both announced new co-watching features. Uh, that's the hot new trend. Watch it with your friends over the Internet. Hulu Watch Party launched for subscribers on the no ads tiers. Uh, so you have to be paying a little bit extra and lets you co-watch with up to eight people for on-demand content with integrated chat on hulu.com uh the, the thing about most of these is they're they're built for the web for your laptop for your computer not really for your television feature does not require a browser extension though and each viewer can control their own playback with an option to click to catch up so if you miss something you can go back without messing it up for everybody else and then catch up to resync your viewing. Meanwhile, Plex's Watch Together feature launched in beta and lets users watch either Plex on demand content or your personal library. Uh, Plex on demand is the stuff that's ad supported, but if you've just got something in your library, Plex is like, great, we'll, we'll sync it up over the internet for you. Uh, the feature syncs playback between the viewers, but there is no integrated chat in that one. So you have to find some other way to talk to folks. Number of viewers depends on the Plex server hardware, network connection, disk speed, and the streaming content. They're not putting a number on it based on available conditions. Watch Together from Plex is available on the Apple TV, iOS, and Android with Roku support on the way. So Plex kind of ahead of the game here in making this available on the television. Features free while in beta, but will eventually require a Plex Pass subscription once it's officially released. Earlier this month, HBO partnered with the browser extension Scener for co-watching with up to 20 other people. And of course, we, uh, as we mentioned before, Netflix uh, Watch Party is an independent extension that does this. There are a bunch of other extensions that do this independently as well. Uh, but Brian, Justin, it feels like uh, everybody's trying to be the the watch party leader in, in these partial lockdown times. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's a number of shows like if we were going to watch what we do in the shadows, I think I would absolutely enjoy it more if all four of us were watching it together at the same time. The only thing that we don't have is a, a way to broadcast to, I don't know, let's say hundreds or thousands of other people at the same time. Like, there is something valuable to the sitting on the couch next to people you love experience. And and so I, I, I was a bit surprised when this popped up on my Hulu. Um, I'm surprised it's taken this long, but I feel like it's got a long 
way to go before it becomes you know fully rolled out uh, uh, J J justin would would you all things being equal let's say it's a show that that you're not watching with with ashley um what are some of the shows that you would rather watch with the four of us I mean, well, I, I would say watching shows together, watching movies together. There's been plenty of shows that have been recommended uh, uh, to me, uh, unlike Devs, which Bryce hates okay. and God, mentions so all the time. So good. But, uh, you know, I, I think that number one, this is technology. It's been around for a very long time. This is not exactly a technological breakthrough. A lot of what the shutdown and uh, the, the quarantine stuff did is just move people ahead in terms of technological adoption. And this is something we've talked a lot on Daily Tech News Show, uh, but I think this is a, a outgrowth of it. You, what you've just gotten now isn't the fact that we're discovering new technology. It's the fact that a lot of people who are now forced to interact with technology for their work now can understand, oh, this is kind of like when we do a Zoom, but it's just playing a movie. And, and that gives the widespread adoption. Although I agree with you, Brian, I think where this really starts to sing is when we can add in more pop-up social features. So more of a chat room experience, more of a, a VOIP experience uh, uh, where we are able to kind of feel like this is a very fun binding communal experience. Uh, uh, once the novelty of this technology that's been around you know, for a and, while kind of wears off. I know you were making an unfair dig uh, when you mentioned devs, but devs is actually a pretty good example of the type of show that would benefit from this because devs is the kind of show where I find myself, you know, my, my daughter says like, no, 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 pause it, pause it, pause it. Is that the guy from the thing in the moment earlier? And yeah. didn't he say something about that? That like, like that communal experience while on the surface, no auteur would claim is going to enhance the overall experience, uh, it's realistically what we do, right? Well, uh, think of it like this. When the movie theater shut down, there was a viral moment for uh, audio from the theater for big key moments. And Endgame was one of them where, I won't get into it if you haven't seen it, but there's a pivotal moment Endgame. toward the end of the film yeah, where uh, he Thanos says does... the game is ended. It's yeah. me, the chess master. And then he said, I'm thinking of checkmate. And then that was yeah. the end of the show. Thanos, Thanos does a back handspring and boy, it I knew it look majestic. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, but in that moment, what people were reacting to was how much the audience was like screaming and gasping and everything. And I think on a miniature level, if we were able to watch a show, let's say Game of Thrones, when it was both airing and good uh, <laughs> all together, like that would have been amazing. That would have been really fun to experience that for the first time with all of you guys. I don't think that so why this technology is there. This technology has been around. They've been trying to make this happen forever. They, they try, they've tried to make it happen over the internet. They've tried to make it happen with Blu-ray over the internet. They tried to make it happen on game consoles. The thing that's making it get attention right now is the lockdown. But I want to ask, how many of you have done this? I mean, I mean, uh, this specific thing, I, I don't know and what this scheme have, is. Have you done any any co-watching in the past three months? I, with my family in the same room, 100%. No, 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 no. Yes. This, this no, kind, no, this over kind. The over no, no, over the, the internet. internet. But, but, that's my whole point is is um uh it's it's been licensing that has prevented us from ever doing this before because but there's been Netflix watch party and then there's been Twitch and now the for Amazon and now then HBO and now Hulu like I'm I'm not I don't mean to rain on the parade but I'm not getting the sense that this is getting uptake any more than no, previous efforts. I, I mean, no, 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 no. I, I do. I would disagree with that. I do think that there is an uptake difference. That the difference isn't the technology. The difference is everybody understanding it and that it not being a big rigmarole thought of as a big rigmarole to do. Not to say that the hoops are any smaller than they were before, but I do think people's willingness to do it and therefore our willingness to ask and engage in it is greater uh you know the, the last time i did something like this was like with an old girlfriend i watched battlestar galactica and we just like paused it paused our dvrs at the same time during the commercials so we could talk to each other about it but like this is an experience that i think can be powerful the difference is now if the if 
we think of it as more people want to do it because more you don't have to explain how to do it, then it will be more used. I don't know. I, I get the sense that the only reason this is gaining any traction at all is because people are prevented from hanging out with each other in person as much. And people are trying it once and saying, well, that was interesting and not doing it again in most cases. I know there's exceptions and you can email us, courtkillers at gmail.com. Uh, but I think most people, my, this is my gut feeling, I don't have data behind this, are trying it once and forgetting it because that's been the history of this technology. So my, my question is, is this fetch or the iPad? Is this, the industry keeps trying to do this and people are like, it's a novelty. We don't really want that. Uh, or is it the iPad, which is, it was something people kept thinking they wanted and didn't want till the iPad came along and said, this is how you do a tablet. And then suddenly everybody wanted it. This is no, I, to me and, and not, uh, uh because, uh, uh, Brian and I are usually so clean with our metaphors. I feel confident in attacking yours, Tom, but I, I, I would say that. <laughs> This is not necessarily fetch versus the iPad. This is just a diluted version of Zoom. You know, Zoom was around. Zoom had existed for a very, very long time. Now we will see and reasonable minds might be able to disagree as to how much we will use uh, products like Zoom going forward. But I do think we'll probably see an uptick in it. And I think we will see a diluted uptick in something like this. I don't think that it's mass market. I don't think that in this current technology that it is ready for it, uh, for a, a, a broad section to uh, interact with it. But I do think that it is something that we'll see more of going forward. Because now that I even think about it, the Michael Jordan doc and WrestleMania were two things that I got together with friends literally on a group chat with the camera in my face and uh, uh, just watched a television while they watched their television and we talked about it. And, and that was fun. We experienced that here. Uh, I, I, uh, 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 it was Westworld. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, Bryce and Tom and I had more fun watching Westworld, texting each other in the moment or whatever. Just a little bit of a goose where we all are synchronized and we could actually say things to each other or, or press pause and tell stories. I think it would have been a better experience all around. Uh, likewise, but speaking I, to I, the I, novelty, I, we only did that once and we were doing that like the easiest way possible, which was over text message. Yeah. Also, like, I wasn't in sync with you all. I, I, but you were I close like, enough. Like, like I think all things I was things like 30 minutes equal. ahead of you. So, I was just remembering what you were talking about and not spoiling. Here, here's my point is I think that that all things being equal, we want to feel like we're in the same room experiencing the same thing at the same time. I think that is why all of twitch.tv exists. I think that most of the time that we have experienced video games, it has not been as the player, but as one of the other people on the couches, right? And, and, and we've been listening to other people. I think that we would like to experience that with um, video entertainment, but there has been licensing problems that have pre prevented us from being able to do that. But we're in one of those weird moments where where people are so desperate, and by people I mean, you know, the companies who, who own the rights to things, they're so desperate to, to, to just get everything going that they've been willing to cut loose on that kind of stuff. And uh, if, if, if it gets us to a place where we can form watch parties, and yes, there has been technology that will roughly sync us up or whatever, Here's what I think is going to happen is there's going to be a new class of VJs. And I know I predicted this earlier before, but there's going to be a type of VJ where it's like, I'm going to watch this movie and 10,000 of you are going to watch me watch this movie. And I'm going to pause this movie when I feel like it. It's me, C. Robert Cargill, and I'm going to explain to you why this director is important or how this was the first time that this effect was used or whatever. I, I feel like 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 we're working out the kinks and all that. We're only going to see more of that. I think those are two different things, though. What you just said, I, I am more bullish on, which is if licensing gets worked out, uh, what I did with Merrill Barr, what you guys did with Merrill Barr and his Twitch channel where we used the Prime Video stuff and we watched a movie and we talked about it together while a bunch of other people in a chat room watched, fundamentally believe that is going to take off as a genre. You're absolutely right. But this idea of co-watching already happens, and I don't think it's going to happen more 
it'll just be easier for the people who already wanted to do it sometimes. And I, I, I don't think this is like Zoom because Zoom was happening already in a large numbers. It just got larger when more people had to use it. I guess all, I don't my think point this is, is happening whatever, whatever, numbers. whatever your X on Zoom is, I think there's like a, a fifth of that is in watch along technology or less, mm -hmm. right? Whatever you want to set it to. I don't think, again, I don't think it's going to be explosive like Zoom because it hasn't been explosive like Zoom. I think that it's just going to be more uh, walk along more. Now, where I do think it can take off is if it's literally just a thing that we can, uh, that that is integrated a lot easier. It still is fairly janky, uh, even now that it is uh, technologically possible. But if we could be in a world where, uh, uh, you know, and maybe that part of this, you know, requires a camera facing the couch, right? But uh, if we could be watching things and even embedded into the uh, movie or television, it knows the big plot points and, and we can watch back together our reactions to like the, the big thing that happened just now. Like there is cool stuff here. I think this is a seed of something that can get larger, but in terms of that's, that's why I phrased it as fetch versus iPad fetch is it's always been 5%. It'll always be 5% or less. And no technology is going to change that. Stop trying to make it uh, a thing that happened. But what you're describing is iPad in my, in my analogy, which is somebody will come along and make the app, or maybe it's Twitter or Facebook, whatever you want to use. Someone will come along and make the app that makes us all go, Oh, this is what we were missing. This is, yeah, this is what will make it work. Yes, I, I, I agree with that. I, I don't think that this is its final form in any way. I think the only thing that is different is that there's a lot more people that are screwing around with stuff in browser that are screwing around with uh, th their computer on levels that they hadn't before. Uh, uh, and even uh, I know a lot of people listening to this might find it to be rudimentary, but a lot of people's grasp on technology is fairly rudimentary. And now they are experimenting with it on levels that they wouldn't have before. Uh, I, I, in general, agree with you. This is not the next big thing, but it certainly is a thing to try. Let me throw one sideways possibility out there, which is there's a number of shows that I've started that I haven't been able to finish because at some point they became co-watches. And because they became co-watches with my significant other or my co-host of, or whatever, or my children or whatever, that, 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 they became like, well, we'll wait till we both have the time and then we never have the time or whatever. In a world where, let's say a Google knows your calendar, knows their calendar, doesn't have to share either calendar with each other, but can just kind of say, hey, uh, don't know what you're up to in an hour, but both of you have an opening to watch the next episode of Devs. Would you like to? And I know Bryce's answer would be get bent. I'd rather kill myself, but... <laughs> Let's say, sorry, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm never going to let that go. I, uh, but, 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 but there could be something, uh, this could be the beginning of something that brings us to that place. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that it doesn't require the, the remoteness of it, right? It's actually more useful for in-person viewing. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I would in, say it does way. require the remoteness because like, for example, well, I'm just saying like if, if you're, if your co-watching problem was Bryce, well, I mean, yeah, I guess you guys he doesn't have the same live in my house, yeah. so so it would not but, be. But I, I guess it's useful <laughs> it would, for It both. would quite it's literally be both. the best case use of but my if, scenario. But if it's your wife or your kids, <laughs> it's still useful. I guess that's my. That's, uh, that's what yes, I'm to say. yes, but 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 my my point is, um, uh, I, I I think it just needs to tie in with a few other AI kind of related things, and then suddenly it becomes extremely useful. Well, folks, uh, you know what else is extremely useful? Your Money. support. Money. Yeah. I was going to say support. Hell not yeah. Piece of Money. Ass, but yeah. That, you know. big, that big green, baby. Yeah. It, it, look, I, 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 we've gotten a lot of emails and, and like 70 of the 75 emails that we got literally said, explain to me money and why we should give some to cord killers. I'm no expert. Tom's no expert. Bryce is no expert. Justin, will you explain? I'm not a moneyologist. Will you explain no. all of this to 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 those folks? Invented in 1355, money was invented by Friedrich Money, <laughs> who decided that he wanted things with paper, 
And he was like, what if paper ruled the world? <laughs> and uh, his dog said, cool, because his dog talked. That's a thing that we've lost. Why don't we get back to the good old days? The good old days and we could go to patreon.com slash cord killers and you can give your digital money on a front on Friedrich's legacy to uh, Tom <laughs> and Brian and Bryce, where they give you all this great content about where to watch and how to watch and what you're watching and we can use metaphors. It's just going to be a great time. Don't be a stick in the mud. Please support this fine program by patreon.com slash cord killers. Nailed it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, except money was invented uh, by a Chinese Friedrich. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> a Friedrich Chinese. Chinese Friedrich? <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. It's hyphenated. Uh, let's talk about how to watch. Oh, folks, HBO Max launched in the U.S. on Wednesday. Most HBO subscribers got an app update, giving them the option to access at no additional cost uh, or the option to just stay with HBO now uh, if they wanted. HBO Max includes all of HBO plus additional content. Uh, we've talked about it a lot, but you get the Warner Media stuff, TNT, TBS, DC movies, etc. HBO also no longer available as an Apple TV channel. That was where you added it within the Apple TV app rather than in the HBO app. Uh, if you are an existing subscriber to HBO through the Apple TV channel, then you won't lose access, but you won't get updated to the Max content. However, channel subscribers automatically get HBO Max, uh, and they have been directed to download the Max app and sign in with their Apple account, so it's pretty seamless. Uh, that may explain something because where HBO Max is not available is on Roku and the Fire TV still. Uh, when we spoke last week, I thought, ah, by next week, Roku will be there, but it's not. However, Amazon, uh, I was a little less bullish about. Amazon told Engadget that it wants to offer HBO Max through Prime Video channels, just like Apple is no longer doing. Uh, Amazon is insisting that HBO subscribers get Max through the Prime Video channels, telling Engadget, we believe that if you're paying for HBO, you're entitled to the new programming through the method you're already using. That's just good customer service, and that's a priority for us, end quote. So Apple was willing to go like, mm, fine, you know what? You want to uh, use your app? That's We have a system for that. This is why we don't play favorites. We've got a system. If you play the system, it's fine. Whereas Roku is trying to get deals. They'll let you add, the Roku would let HBO Max put their app in the app store, but they wouldn't get a revenue share. So it's all about arguing about the dollars with Roku. Andy Forsell, executive vice president and general manager of Warner Media's direct-to-consumer projects told CNET that HBO Max has apps for Roku and Fire TV ready to go. It's just a matter of figuring out uh, what those relationships are, seeing if they can convince Amazon to be flexible, seeing if they can come to a number agreement with Roku. That All that aside, or, or maybe about that, I don't know. Brian, how are you feeling about HBO Max? What was your experience? My experience is ongoing. I, and, and I'm so glad that I asked everybody to write in with their experiences because today, today happened to be the day that I opened up my HBO Now app by the way, HBO Go is what you have if you're already subscribed through a cable channel and you get the app, it's HBO Go. If you subscribe straight to HBO Max, it's on its own thing. I legitimately do not know whether or not I'm subscribed through uh, Apple or Amazon, but I do know that upon opening the app, all I wanted to do was find out what were the two Larry Sanders episodes that we needed to talk about, because I know I'd seen them both, but I couldn't remember the second one. I knew that one was the sex tape. Uh, it said, uh, hey, congratulations. This app no longer works. Download the new app. Here's what I have right now. This is on the iPhone? This is on the iPhone. Okay. It just says, it says, it says number one, uh, HBO now no longer works. Download HBO Max. Great. Did it. And it says, hi, welcome to HBO Max. And then it gives me a choice. It says access all of HBO Max right. or access HBO only. Right. I, 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 if I don't know who I'm paying, <laughs> how can I know which of these two? Why would there's I no, possibly pick the, the bad one? I don't know. Uh, maybe people are like, you know what? I just want the old interface. Screw it. I don't want any, I don't want any of that Mac stuff, but... I, it's no different. It's in charge. 
So, 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 which one of these should I click? Hit Max. Max. Hit the purple one. Max. Max. You're overthinking it. Okay, fine. Wait, Qu hold on. You you hadn't actually hit it? No. I thought because that was a picture. It's called good television. Look, uh, I just pressed a button. And it says, who is watching? Okay. And it says, there's only one choice. It says, Brian. It's like, yes, Are of Are you course. Brian? Because well, yes. now it has profile support, which yeah. the HBO Brian. did not. Who is watching? Okay. Brian. And yes, you're right. You're right. And just to be clear, we're still thinking this is good television. <laughs> so are you in are you looking really at it good audio. are you accessing the application i guess i don't know i guess i have hbo max i guess it was easy and painless and so my experience was um <laughs> a little less painful there's rick, than that. there's rick and morty on there <laughs> that's kind of cool uh on uh what tom what day was this on friday was there's it, only three uh, seasons uh, of rick and morty wednesday. though on wednesday uh i think i went and and did did the jump uh maybe wednesday or thursday and uh, it was significantly less painful for for me. I did have to go into the. I went into the app store, the i the i uh, the Apple uh, app store, and manually updated it. And so it changed the icon in place. Uh, I didn't have to open up the app, and it didn't say go do a thing. Um, and I think I did have to re-log in. Uh, I hmm. uh, pay. I think I pay HBO directly. And I logged in, and I was fine. I lost my list of the shows and movies I would like to watch, which was annoying. But other than that, it's been it's been pretty smooth sailing. The hubs are interesting, um, if a little anemic, I might say, short of the HBO side, which has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, Tom and Justin, you guys using the HBO Max? Justin? Uh, I have not yet. Uh, my Apple TV app automatically flipped, although I have not accessed it to see whether or not it's going to ask me vexing questions. But uh, I, I am, uh, I mean, people seem to be really impressed with the, with the library. Um, I was really excited. Meryl Barr, frequent guest here, uh, uh, hit me up that one of uh, my, uh, uh, one of the documentaries that I, I found for my Raise the Dead series, uh, a documentary called Primary, is now on there, and I guess that's because they have to deal with, with with the 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 Criterion collection. Yep. So uh, that's uh, that's great. I mean, they, I think that they have successfully cobbled together a very uh, a very good library. Uh, the big question for them is like I, I'm kind of curious as to why they did not launch this with whatever their next big like. I'm curious that they didn't launch it with a Westworld or or something else that they knew new, was going to be new must content. watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it would have been interesting to launch it with a big HBO show, uh, but yeah. maybe what they're thinking is we want to uh, really push what Max offers in addition to HBO because all the people who subscribe to HBO are already getting HBO. Uh, so let's see if we can bring in the people who don't have HBO with Love Life with Anna Kendrick, with the Criterion Collection, with Studio Ghibli. Uh, that's my guess. That's my guess what the thinking is, which is, you know, we can we can always push a big new HBO return. That's fine. Yeah. Let's let's actually soft launch it and see how many people we can bring in to this that didn't have HBO already. I, d I did see to to uh, uh, raising my eyebrows, uh, like like opening up Hulu to watch, you know, whatever with the kids, like like hulu very prominently was saying hey ever heard of the wire you could finally watch it on hbo if you get hbo max with this button that's now on hulu or whatever so i i, I do think it's interesting that uh various entities are pushing you know i i, I assume each of them are taking their own uh stab at, at what they think will attract their audiences over there it was seamless um, for me. I, I got I got up Wednesday morning. Uh, went to my app when I first upload. When I first opened the HBO Now app, it hadn't changed, uh, which was odd. So I went into the App Store and I uh, said update, and it wouldn't update. And then that was because the App Store hadn't properly loaded. It was my internet connection was a little slow, uh, and and then suddenly it said, "Oh wait, no, there is an update." Uh, as a matter of fact, I updated it. I got the same screen you just saw, Brian. I said, "Yes, give me the Mac stuff," uh, and uh, and from then on, it has been seamless. Except, like you said, Bryce, uh, I didn't really use the watch history a lot, but I I, I lost what little was there. But but uh, but, but I guess th this is the part that I'm genuinely confused by. 
Who who is clicking the no? Don't give me Max. Well, like, email us. Courtkillers at gmail dot com. If you're the person who appreciates okay. that HBO asked you instead of making you because you know somebody was going to complain if they're like, oh man, they may. I just wanted to stick with HBO. I don't know. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if uh, for the people who have Fire TVs or Roku's. If they don't, maybe that's a shared account system that they're doing. Maybe they're moving all the, yep. transferring all the HBO Now accounts and they don't want to move over yet because their TV doesn't have the app yet. What they want if to keep everything still, where it was. They're still protesting until the Snyder Cut date. <laughs> so just HBO, not so fast, Mr. Max. <laughs> We got a bunch of emails from folks uh, telling us their transitions. Uh, for instance, Avalon moved the account over, said it was seamless. I knew HBO Max was coming and how to make sure the transition was as easy as possible. I signed up through the HBO Now website and pay them directly. I can watch HBO Max on my laptop at the moment. But like a lot of other people, I'm waiting for it to arrive on Roku. I do hope there's a separate app, too, because I don't see a way to bookmark shows or movies on the Roku channel app, much less manage that from the road or have it sync up with show progress with what I watch on my laptop. Uh, George wrote in and said, I don't know why HBO just didn't add the new material to HBO without making such a mess of things. They could have announced on May 27th, your HBO gets even better. I'm sure it had something to do with existing agreements and renegotiating current deals, which yes, of course, but what a mess of confusion they have created. Well, at least it gave the tech press something to write about for a few weeks. Thanks for the work you do. Uh, and then finally, yeah, David in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin said, hope everyone has stayed safe and healthy. Just thought I'd report on how my transition went. So far, not terrible. I am an HBO Now subscriber through Hulu. The app on my Android phone updated from HBO Now to Max at launch. My Roku's are stuck on now for a while until HBO and Roku make an agreement. But for myself, that's not terrible because I discovered asking with Bryce that your queue on HBO Now doesn't transfer to Max when you upgrade. So seeing as I didn't down my queue on HBO Now before doing the upgrade, I fired up my Roku stick and added to my Max queue on my phone everything I could see on my Now queue on my bedroom TV. Uh, he also thanks Meryl Barr for recommending Harley Quinn. Uh, he's been watching it on the YouTube TV account and has watched six episodes and likes it. Uh, yeah. So overall, if we're just going to make up a grade, what, A, A minus, B plus? I'd call it a B plus. Uh, and, and I understand that they wanted to strike new agreements and they wanted to work within their existing cable agreements and all of that, but doing so has caused confusion where, where even you, Brian, were like, wait a minute. Why would I choose the, what am I missing? Why would I choose? Why are they giving me an option to have less? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like it's, it is, it is weird. And, like, and instead of just one day opening up HBO and going, oh, it's called HBO max now. And it has a lot more stuff. I think that would have been a better experience for everybody. I think that's a pretty good way to put it. In general, very rarely am I thankful that I've been, you know, uh, 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 I wake up in the morning and I'm faced with a decision that appears to have consequences. So it's like, like almost never am I happy for that to happen. And I, was, I, I suppose that's what I was most surprised about on this. I think considering Netflix is the Raphael in a red uh, outfit and Disney Plus is Leonardo with the blue that I would expect more brainy content uh, uh, with Donatello, the HBO Max purple. Wait, who's yellow? Wait, Donatello was who? No, Raphael was yellow. Who? Wait, Raphael was red. Yeah. Leonardo was blue. Yeah, and Donatello was purple. Who's yellow? Sorry. Uh, Michelangelo. Wait. Oh, he. What did he's he cool. Have? He's cool, but rude. Yeah. Hulu. Oh no, no, he's a party he's dude. A party Sorry, dude. Raphael's a Pizza. party. Uh, cool, but yeah. Yeah. on Hulu. Yeah. No, that. <laughs> yeah. That tracks. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about what to watch in under surveillance. Not like you. By the way, I, I called HBO Max uh, Disney Plus with adult content instead of kid content. Like they're both kind of in the same center. There is, there is, there is definitely a lot of that. And and one one actually last uh, parting shot with HBO Max. I, I do think that for them, they do not have the same install base problem that Disney Plus had. Disney Plus had to launch mm -hmm. with The Mandalorian to make from sure the people signed up on day one. Uh, HBO Max already has an install base that they can then build off of. Deadline reports Apple will team up with Paramount to foot the bill for Martin Scorsese's Western Killers of the Flower Moon that stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. 
Paramount was nervous about the cost, so the deal will supposedly see the movie labeled an Apple original, while Paramount will still distribute theatrically. So this will get the 90-day theater run before coming to Apple TV+. Plus. But after it's out of the theaters, Apple TV+, Plus will be the place that you will find it. Okay. But <laughs> I, I, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of hearing all of these names that are old people who are doing old people movies. And and I know it's a terrible thing for me to say. Forget that I said it. Forget I exist. I'm not here. Pretend I'm not Brian here. hates old people. Justin, I, yes. your take. Uh, I love my elders. And I think that they, they should continue to sparkle as long as they can. Uh, this is it, kind of a... a an almost like paint by numbers story of this kind of ilk where uh, traditional studios are terrified because there's a lot here that reads expensive, uh, an expensive director, expensive actors. And there's a genre that historically doesn't make money Westerns. So now Martin Scorsese wants to do it. Otherwise this would have died on the vine. Uh, uh, White Knights from Cupertino roll down and they say, what money? We're sitting on money. Sure. Take some money. Uh, uh, I think this is fine. This is good. Uh, uh, if you're a Martin Scorsese fan or you like Westerns, you're going to be delighted by it. And Apple TV, get some, uh, get some content. Yeah. First, uh, first time De Niro and DiCaprio in a movie since this boy's life, which was the breakout for DiCaprio. So <laughs> there's that part of it too, unless you hate old people. Uh, mm. Deadline reports that Warner Brothers is in talks with Henry Cavill to return as Superman, though not in a standalone Superman movie. So we're not talking about Man of Steel 2. Instead, Superman might show up in upcoming movies that are not in the can, such as Shazam 2, Black Adam, or Aquaman 2. Uh, he is not expected to appear in The Batman, even though The Batman also is not in the can, at least that according to Deadline. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Deadline called it Superman becoming the Hulk of the DC universe. I mean, I guess I'm okay with that because the Hulk is overpowered and so is Superman. So, like, like, why should either of them have their own movie? Yeah, you know what? You convinced me. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I think the other thing here is that Cavill has continued to acquit himself very well as an actor and other stuff. And so now the idea of recasting Superman is less. What can we get with a new unknown Superman and the the value becomes oh, but you know who keeps being cool and likable, and, and now has the you know, he's hot with The Witcher and everything. Like it's Henry Cavill. Oh, if we could have yeah. The Witcher, Henry Cavill, that would be great. The, people Toss would a go coin nuts to your that, Clark Kent. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, I, I think it's fine, and and hopefully some of what I'm more excited about are Shazam two. We haven't seen Black Adam, right? But Shazam two and Aquaman two to me had they were kinds of movies that I would, now that we've seen Henry Cavill and other stuff, I think a Henry Cavill Superman would fit better. I'd be more excited to see him in those worlds than I were in the very dreary Zack Snyder verse. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm just thinking, I, 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 and this isn't related to your point. Uh, I, I was I was still going round and round in my head about the Snyderverse and the fact that we're not in the Snyderverse, or are we? Like, how do we feel about this idea that DC will have some continuity sometimes, but not all the time? Does it matter? No. Uh, do cool things and then replicate the cool thing to make more cool things. Yeah, I, I, I think we've talked about this before. I feel like uh, we should get closer to the world where we're all just telling stories around a campfire and somebody could be telling a Hercules story and just throw out there like, now you might've heard that Hercules is allergic to kryptonite, but that's not true. He's allergic to eggs. Anyway, here's my story. <laughs> and then off you yeah. go, you know? Well, I mean, like, uh, look at it like this, but, but having seen the Witcher and man from uncle and the mission impossible movie, could you imagine that actor being cast in a role where he pouts 90% of the movie, right? Like that, that now fundamentally seems like a miscasting of Henry Cavill's strengths. And now I just hope that we see more of his strengths that we've seen in other films, which he's a, he's a charming guy. He can play a detached guy. He is somebody that you kind of root for as we've seen in, in the Witcher. He's funny. Uh, I, I would like to see a little bit more of that in Superman. I'm glad he's getting a chance here to kind of sample, just come in, 
play cleanup, knock something out of the park, and then move on. I also think he honestly loves playing Superman but doesn't want to lock down to only playing Superman. And this is kind of the perfect compromise for him too. You get to do that part you love without having to spend quite as much time doing it. Sorry. Still, it's, therefore, you can still be the Witcher and other stuff. Is there literally any other actor you can name who doesn't fit into that category? Who's the actor that you're thinking of who played Superman and only wants to play Superman? Well, Okay, but my point being that actually, George I think Reeves. there's been George Reeves. Brandon You're thinking Ralph. of George Reeves. Brandon Routh. My, Brandon George Ralph. Reeves. Yeah. Brandon Routh went my, back and played another Superman esque person. Right? Yeah. My, yeah, my point is that uh, Cavill really loves it. Uh, yeah. But, but doesn't want to get, doesn't want to fall for that typecast thing, which I think is common. Are you, where, do, where, you where, whereas like Christopher Reeve, uh, tolerated it but didn't love it and i think maybe yeah, he I, loved I, it at first yeah. but i it's it's common for actors to say i've done that i need yeah. to move on from that yeah i, I also i also think that it's it's hard for us to put the narrative often in hollywood becomes about the actor's choice when very rarely is that mm. the animating decision unless you're at a very 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 high point in your career uh I, I think that, that there's a lot of business decisions. And to be totally honest, uh, I don't know how much Warner Brothers really had a handle on exactly what they even wanted to do with the DC universe. And I don't know if they have it now, considering they're going to dump 30 million more into the, the Snyder cut Justice League miniseries. Well, that's for HBO Max. I mean, you got you to throw money at that. It's the future of AT&T, for goodness sake. Or is it? Exactly. Ma Bell uh, demands to be fed. <laughs> Apple has ordered a complete series reboot of Fraggle Rock for Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, those short videos that we talked about before, Fraggle Rock, Rock On, uh, have apparently done well. The new Fraggle Rock series from the Jim Henson Company will reunite the original stars. So we'll get Gobo, Red, Boober, Monkey, Wembley, Uncle Traveling Matt, uh, new songs, new adventures. And uh, Apple has acquired the 96 episode back catalog of the original run of Fraggle Rock for Apple TV Plus as well. Their first licensing deal. We talked about the possibility of Apple TV Plus licensing old content. Here we go. I have no idea if this will be good or not, but I do highly recommend that everybody who has the ability go to YouTube and check out uh, the Defunct Land uh, original series about uh, Jim Henson's uh, various adventures, including the Fraggle Rock. Man, it's 96 episodes. Oh my God. That's a lot of episodes. I didn't realize Fraggle Rock had that kind of run. Not only that, but like, like it was very forward looking in that he uh, uh, licensed out various iterations of Fraggle Rock for various countries where uh, uh, some of them, uh, uh, the human parts were played totally by different uh, local actors, but then, but then uh, ultimately that didn't pan out. And so what he uh, ended up doing was just taking the original footage and then just dubbing it over. But, but, but basically the idea was, is that uh, the fraggle part would be ubiquitous and uh, uh, universal and that you would find your own local person with the, the Muppet dog to, uh, 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 I don't know, locally represent you. Well, this weekend I watched some video conferenced reunions. One was an interview with cast members from Star Trek Voyager. Uh, another was an actual table read of the pilot episodes of Kim's Convenience and Fresh Off the Boat. That one was interesting uh, because they did a Q&A with the combined casts of both shows, but you had to donate to COVID-19 relief to get in. And by the time I watched it, it was too late to do the donating, so I never saw the Q&A. Uh, there was also a, a Lord of the Rings uh, reunion that was done over video conferencing. Uh, did Have you all watched any of these now multitudinous reunions that are happening? Uh, I have not. I The only one that really would have animated me uh, was uh, Mr. Show, and I had a hard time nailing down exactly when that was, not for any fault of them, but because I'm uh, functionally stupid. But, uh, you know, I don't know. There's I, I've been saving now that I've been watching Community, which we're going to get to in a second. Uh, I, I know Community did a reunion. And so I've been saving that once I'm up, once I finish Community, I'll go and watch it just in case they drop some hot tidbits that are in upcoming episodes. I'm honestly like too super scared to end up loving something less as a result of watching any of these. Like, like if I love a thing then I don't know why I would even risk loving it less for having watched it 
you know, be performed in a lower fidelity format. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, mo most of these are just uh, uh, roundtable conversation, so they're not performing yeah. it. But the table read uh, does hit to what you're talking about, which is like, well, now I'm just seeing them read it rather than perform it. Uh, and I, there were points when I felt like, well, wait, what am I actually getting out of this? Uh, but it was kind of fun to see them in their natural habitats while they suddenly became the characters. Uh, but the Q and A's and the roundtables, I think, are more appealing to me. It's it's I, it's a bit like live albums, right? Like like, yeah. did you ever buy a live album yeah, yeah. and you were like, thank mm -hmm. goodness I heard a shittier version of this song <laughs> with more cheering in the background? Well, wait a minute, no, like this is con programming. This is literally con programming. Yes, the yes. Q and A just, stuff. Just, yeah. Yeah, they've just virtualized. I mean, because table reads happen at cons too. Like, yeah, like true. this is this is exactly what we love about fan conventions. Now, virtually uh, uh, distributed, and now everybody's like, "Oh, well, I don't know if I would go to a fan convention with nerds, but uh, I, sure, I'll, I'll donate ten dollars to COVID relief so I can watch I, literally I know, the same content." There's something to what Brian says, though, which is it's a different thing to say I went to the concert than to say I bought the live album. Yeah, right. Well, sure, yes, no, no, it is a different thing, but it's the same content. Right? It's the same concept, like, right? Yeah, a, a concert huh. and the live album are the same thing. They're in different mediums, which I guess in the Marshall McLuhan medium is the the message kind of thing is its own experience. But don't bring I, Marshall I do McLuhan that, into yeah. this. We'll end up stock talking about corf ball. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, see what we've had our eyes on. You mentioned Community, uh, Justin. Is that what you've been watching? I've been I've been burning through community. Me and the missus have been watching community. Uh, uh, we're on season four now. And P.U. does it stink. Oh, my good God. Like hot garbage on a summer's day. Uh, uh, this is very it, it is almost something that you should put in the television writers museum so you can understand what a show that had a very specific creative direction looks like if you not only got the talent and care that went into it, but then also remained very devoted to some elements of it. Like, for example, Pierce Hawthorne, Chevy Chase's character, is an old racist. That's the point of his character. However, what you realize is that through the first three seasons, you still cared about Pierce Hawthorne. You felt that he was alienated and you felt bad when he was lonely. And so you rooted for him, even though you would be disgusted by him. Uh, in season four, he's just an old racist. At which point you're like, why is this person just shouting racist things on my television? I feel bad that I'm consuming it. Uh, uh, so we'll see whether or not season five and season six are different once Dan Harmon returns. Uh, in in the meantime, though, boy howdy, is it hard choking down this fetid trash? So so so, how do you explain that to your loved one that you're watching the show with, where you're like, uh, "Hey, this is garbage, and I'm not going to defend it, but we kind of have to get through it to get to the good stuff again." Uh, I initially said Dan Harmon got fired, and so this is going to suck. It started sucking. And then about three episodes in, she was like, why do we have to watch it? <laughs> and I said, because it's not going to beat me. And now <laughs> it's her going to sleep while I watch terrible episodes of Community because I have an oppositional defiance disorder that apparently extends to a television show that is being streamed through Netflix. Proposal. Yeah. The two of you watch Devs. And don't ever watch the rest of season four. Then just come back at season five. So Proposal. here's the thing with two, two of you co-watch devs with Bryce. Okay. Here's the thing with, yeah, I don't want to say, but I've got a friend. You guys know him. We can talk off air who hates devs. Oh my God. God, does he hate devs? Just, a, just he, man, you think what I said about community season four is bad. <laughs> Listen to this guy cut a promo on devs. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, Brian, what have you been watching? I uh, started watching Face, uh, Space Force. Um, better better than I dared hope. Um, first episode, eh. 
Second First episode's episode, not good, but uh, the second is good. Second ep- oh, oh, see, you did. I uh, did manage to catch it. Yeah. yeah right? Uh, second episode got sufficiently silly that I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, as long as you have... As long as you have somebody sincerely using sign language to try to get a monkey on a surprise satellite to pretty please reattach arms on a satellite, uh, whoopsie doodle also ate a dog. Uh, like, like, yeah. like, I'm all in. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. I have a confession. Yes. I watched Space Force three weeks ago. <laughs> what? Uh, my, my wife who works for Rotten Tomatoes had a screener of it. It had a very hard NDA that said, you cannot breathe a word about this until the NDA lifts, which was like two days ago. Uh, but we, we blew through it and I enjoyed the hell out of it. I really did. Like I was expecting it to be bad. Uh, so maybe that's, you know, setting your expectations as part of this, but I, I found that all of the characters were, you know, I cared about into, to some extent, uh, especially as the episodes went on, I thought it wasn't just taking the cheap shots all the time that they were, you know, showing that there is some complexity to, to this sort of, of thing rather than just, you know, constantly taking pot shots. And I don't know. I, in the end, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So, it's getting ripped apart by the critics though. Uh, too bad on that. Um, I'm, I'm only two episodes in, but I am enjoying Ben Schwartz on Middle Ditch and Schwartz uh, for their improv stuff. Um, uh, I liked him okay as John Raffio on on Parks and Rec. Um, I feel like Ben Schwartz is about to be a, a, a GD megastar. I feel like he is on the cusp of like blowing the world's mind. Yeah. Uh, he apparently on the, on the junket for space force, uh, said that when Greg Daniels asked him to be part of space force, he said only on the condition that it's not John Raphael. I do not want this character to be John Raphael. Right. Um, so, is and it's not still a little bit clown. I mean, he's, he yeah. is John Raphael. So yeah. Yeah. Be, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right. Uh, all right. Bryce, what should we be on the lookout for? Oh, uh, okay. Here's some uh, something we got to pick from Dan, who writes, I have a recommendation for On the Lookout. It's called uh, The Great, a Hulu show starring Elle Fanning and Nicholas Holt. The show is a historical fiction about the rise of Catherine the Great in Russia. The dialogue is hilarious, and the actors are great in their parts. Dan. Thanks, Dan. I know we had this as a cold open a few months ago on uh, Cord Killers, and it looked fun. It looked like kind of a raunchy sort of retelling, kind of in the same vein as, uh, uh, what, what was that Apple TV show, Tom Dickinson? Yeah, yeah, Dickinson. Yeah, it seemed it seems kind of in that uh, kind of like uh, it's in the time period, but it's still period like... period piece with a modern sensibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that looks pretty cool. I uh, would like to get to that sometime. Ten episodes of this mini series, so there may not be a follow up, uh, are streaming now on Hulu. If you've got something we should be on the lookout for, email us cordkillers at gmail dot com. By the way, uh, I, full disclosure, I was going to make Homecoming my eyes on. Until I forgot and tossed to Bryce, which I think tells you everything you need to know about season two of Homecoming. It's so, it's such a six out of ten season. It's, it's, it's a real devs and a half. It's just. Oh, whoa, 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 my God, Bryce! Not, not please, even in, in the these same turbulent breath. times, keep it clean. Hey, look, in this divisive culture, can we agree on one thing? And that's that, that sooner or later, everybody's gonna need to buy a new computer and when you do you should buy it from our friends over at doghousesystems.com slash fee slash rogue and use promo code rogue at checkout uh you'll get a free ssd with it but most importantly you'll be supporting the show because these are the guys that are supporting all the technology behind this podcast woof let's move on to the front lines front lines hey everybody quibi updated its ios app to support apple airplay no, Wait, uh, Tom, Tom, that sounds like that would make it possible for me to play Quibi on a horizontally framed large screen television. That's right. That's right. TV. Uh, the video service launched without that ability, but now it's got it for iOS and they hope to have Chromecast support in June sometime. Woo. Uh, I tried How it. long until Quibi sells? It Quibi sells before the end of the year. Yes or no? Oh, yes. No. No. Quib- no. 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 Quibi sells? Yeah, sells its library of stuff to another one of these streaming things that would definitely love more content. No, 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 uh, no. because everybody, 20, 20, everybody retains their own. Yeah, yeah, it'll be next year because everybody retains the rights to all of their properties. Okay, 
Uh, Disney Plus is set to launch in Japan on June 11th. Uh, the monthly subscription will cost 700 yen a month, about $6.50 U.S. Current subscribers to Disney Deluxe from NTT Docomo will be upgraded to Disney Plus at no additional cost. Uh, for those of you out there keeping score, this is going to goose those Disney Plus numbers quite a bit because you've got an existing subscriber base already. Japan is the fourth largest entertainment market. Uh, so this is this is a big, important piece in that puzzle for Disney Plus worldwide. Netflix now owns the Egyptian theater on Hollywood Boulevard, the place uh, where, um, was it Robin Hood? The first uh, Hollywood premiere happened. Netflix will invest in the theater's renovation and will use it for special events, screenings, and premieres during the week. The venue's nonprofit, American Cinetech, Cinematech, will remain nonprofit and continue to expand the theater's movie and event programming in conjunction with Netflix. And director James Cameron and producer John Landau arrived in Wellington, New Zealand Sunday to resume filming the Avatar sequel. Uh, Cameron and Landau will spend two weeks in quarantine before they can get back to work. Staff will return next week and will also self-isolate. New Zealand's borders are closed. However, there is an exemption for activities of, quote, significant economic value, like a.k.a. making all those sweet, sweet, blue glowing avatar dollars. I see you funding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the prime minister of New Zealand said uh, when she greeted Cameron from two meters away. <laughs> Variety ran a story last week about some of the theaters reopening in the United States. About 3% of indoor theaters in the U.S. were open as of last week. Uh, a theater in Vidalia, Georgia, saw weekend attendance in the 30s. That's 30 people at a screening. Uh, Ritz Theater in Thomaston, Georgia, had nobody uh, Center Theaters in Oklahoma says attendance was about 25% what it usually is this time of year. Attendance at Elk Theater in Rapid City, South Dakota was down 70%. Variety also talked to theater owners who reopened in other locations like Texas, uh, uh, Sugar Land, and San Antonio, some places in Utah. And some of them are reporting that uh, even if they have low numbers, they're reopening to try out their safety protocols because they're hoping that, you know, as time goes on, they'll get more and more people. So this is a good way to do a soft opening and get those new distancing measures and masks and concession protocols in place. So, yeah, I, I think I think also a lot of these numbers, you're going to have to wait until you see a big release to see whether yeah, or not, of course, you know, people are going to go back. Local news. I don't I, I don't know if we've talked about this, but straight up the uh, the theater across the street from me closed uh, Sky Cinemas closed, closed, oh, closed went out of business, closed. It, just just forever and ever. And um I mean, obviously, the property owners own the place, but I mean, what what do you repurpose a movie theater into? <laughs> Let's say you got twelve, you got twelve giant big boxes with seats in it. What are you going to do when with our that? Uh, when our movie theater went out of business in Greenville in the eighties? It became a racquetball court. I don't think this will be a racquetball. Maybe I should just call him no, and say, you "Hey, demo, can I come?" You demo, you demo the whole thing. I mean, like, uh, and that's or you sell it to another theater chain. At some yes, point. I, yeah. I mean, either that's... either a theater buys it, and it's like, okay, cool, we'll just redo that, um, or know, you on, just you have to demo it. Kind of got me excited about this, uh, this this racquetball thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, so much <laughs> racquetball! Just call him up. The upstairs too. <laughs> yeah. <So>. Right. <laughs> It was the 80s. It was a different time. All Oof. right, let's get to some dispatches from the front. Ander wrote in and said, when talking about the Snyder Cut of Justice League, Brian brought up all the free marketing they were able to get from their fan support. What's funny is that's also the reason the producers changed the name of the movie John Wick from the original name Scorn. Apparently, according to Ander, Keanu Reeves kept saying the movie was called John Wick. And the co-creator, Derek Colstead, said in an interview, marketing was like, dude, that's four to five million dollars in free advertising so far. So it's John Wick instead of Scorn. I can't imagine it being Scorn now, said Scorn creator, now John Wick creator, Derek Colstead. That's amazing. Uh, and I thought we'd get a kick out of that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, John Lewis writes us saying, uh, hello, your boss here. History 101 on Netflix is a masterful COVID compatible production. Uh, it's comprised entirely of one uh, narrator and stock footage B-roll. Not great, not, <laughs> but totally watchable. <laughs> Put that on the poster. Uh, we <laughs> would be interested on how cheaply they were able to get this done and how many people realize what's going on with it. Keep up the good work. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know anything about this. And it sounds like he's playing coy 
on his endorsement of it. So it maybe sounds like homework to me. Bryce, was this a, a, a on the lookout pick you were thinking? Could, could did we remember? It seemed like an email I would have used for on the lookout, but I didn't put this here. I don't know oh, okay, not, gotcha. Uh, uh, but it sounds no, sounds cool. I, I did see that, this pop up uh, today. It's all like infographics and stuff, so it's like 20, 30 minutes of like we're teaching you stuff, but it's all animated. Ah, uh, I see. It wasn't an on the lookout pick, but it could have been. I think yeah. the interesting thing here is that it is. COVID-19 friendly because it's mm. it's all narrator and stock footage. Uh, thank you, John, for letting us know about that. Thank you, Justin Robert Young, for joining us. Yes, I love you guys, and I love television and movies, and I love everybody, and you can and you can love me back if you go to my Twitter account, Justin R. Young on Twitter. <laughs> Do it now, folks. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. And we are live, twitch.tv slash night attack. Also carried on diamondclub.tv, Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. See you again next time. Hey, Tom Merritt. Yes, Brian Brush. Know who I love even more than my own children? Your other children? No, not my wife. I know what you're saying. I love our $5 patrons. These are the people that keep us loud, live, and independent. Thank you so much, $5 patrons. You know what? I love them more than not life itself, because then I'd be dead and I couldn't appreciate them, but really, really, really close. And I'm so thankful that they are here to make this show happen. Thank you so much to all of our $5 a month patrons. You guys are wizards. You're champions. You're heroes. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)